Hello and welcome back. And that is right, today we are finally going to be doing our temperature testing on these. This is the Dbrand Dark Plate 2.0 kit. It is, if you're not already aware, which would be weird, a, a, a modification of this, the PS5. And it's a very small modification, but not so small that Sony didn't go absolutely crazy town banana pants legally to try and stop these being made in their previous generation. I'm not gonna bore you with a lot of the details. I'm sure you already know about it. If I had to skim over it briefly, back when the Sony, uh, Sony PlayStation 5 was in development and getting close to launch, they were talking about these plates being able to be removed. Um, and many, many, many brands started working on individual plates and then Sony went legal as much as possible. Probably the loudest and proudest of all of those brands out there were D brand that were trying to produce their plates for this system. They were ultimately, from what intents and purposes of WT Online, silenced and are through certain modifications and changes over time, were able to release this, which still sounds like there is legal, you know, fan dangling in the distance, but it is a modification of these panels that are a difference in shape, a difference in design, the printed logo, and of course, this, this fan here on the top. Now, I'm also gonna include an unboxing of sorts, but frankly, I'm not gonna get into too much detail. This isn't normally the sort of thing we do on the channel. I mean, inside you've got this lovely retail kit. You've got the bit of foam. You've got plate number one. Again, we'll go for it. I went for the PS1 gray plate because anyone that watches this channel knows I've got that black PS2 design and I'm that much of a loser. We've got the other plate. Again, it did come in plastic, but it got lost during the testing. And that's really it. That's the contents of your box. So as I say, we're not going to do too much looking at unboxing, but what we are going to do is take a good look at these plates before we put them on this device. Because again, one of the most obvious factors about this, if you look inside, it's got the hooks that we're used to there, are those vents. Now, these don't have a fan, an active fan inside. This isn't assisting active airflow in this system. All this is doing is supplying an additional area here for air to enter the system. Now, why is that an area of slight argument? Well, the PS5, for those of you who may not be aware, takes advantage, according to Sony themselves, during early development of something called negative pressure. And that is when, on the front of the system, air is being drawn in as quickly as possible, introduced into the internal operating fan that we're gonna look at in a bit, and then pushed out the back. That is what it does. It creates that vacuum system that pulls air in and then pushes it out the back as quickly as it can to recycle air and introduce cooler air as quickly as possible. Now, the argument is, for some users, the reason they wouldn't go for it at this is because this mucks around with that formula. What it does is it introduces a new air, air element that air can come in and hopefully just in, according to the, a D brand, but a lot of people aren't convinced. And in today's video, we're gonna be doing a few different things. We've basically got three objectives to cover in this video, and I'm gonna put the plates on in just a moment. One, we want to see how they look against each other. That's gonna be very brief. We just wanna see how they look near each other and ultimately see aesthetically if there's any problem there. Two, we wanna learn about ambient temperature. So we're gonna be utilizing the standard thermometer here. We're already gonna use a single node this time. And we're going to be placing this node just underneath the operating fan. Hopefully there'll be images on screen. And we are going to place this um, uh, node to kind of assess the temperature of the system as it's in operation because it's a closed system and it's very difficult to get more of a reading than that. The third thing we're gonna be doing is installing an SSD. Now we're gonna install a Seagate Fire CUDA 530. It's one of the most popular drives out there. And it's got a heatsink on board and we're gonna place that inside the M2 slot and we're gonna run the games from that M2. Now that's really important because not only are we gonna be judging this system's temperature inside the casing, we're also going to be looking at the temperature of the SSD. We're going to, um, after doing the test, introduce the, P, uh, the SSD into a PC, analyze the temperature readings there, and display them at the same time. So it's going to be the exact temperature of the brain of that SSD, the controller. So that's what we're looking at today. We want to see how it looks, but more importantly, does it do what it says it can do? And are you better or worse off buying it. So, again, these knock around for about $60, $59. You can pay another 10 to get a nice little strip down the middle. You can pay, I think, $5 per LED strip. But let's have a look. Let's get this off of here. So, 
We'll remove the plates. Let's get plate number one off of there. And we go to the other side, the lesser removed plate. And we'll get that off of there. This one really puts up a fight normally. As we can see, having a look at these plates while I move the console there. So let's see how they compare. Firstly, we'll go for the non, um, uh, what's it, uh, CD uh, optical drive end. So that's how they look, kind of that side together, definitely more rounded. And on the other side there, right there. You can see, again, they've got the similar hooks, even in terms of thickness. I would say they are pretty much identical in thickness. Another thing that's worth highlighting is, whereas the PlayStation 1 has obviously the logos, and I very much doubt that's going to come across very well in this light, but inside there they've got kind of the cross, circle, square, triangle. These have zero ones, kind of like binary, written all the way through the inside. So, put that there, and then we look at the other side. We can have a little look there, and again, on the inside, nice and simple. We've got the hooks. If we look at depth, pretty much the same although arguably this one's a little flatter the d brand there and again if we have a look inside we've got the zeros and the ones and on that we've got the symbols there if the light would ever not stop betraying me so let's get these plates applied so we're going to go for plate number one goes on there nice and easy and that is how it looks so again i've gone for that ps1 kind of gray design there and before I place the other plate down, let's talk a little bit about the SSD we're going to be using. So again, we are using the Seagate 5 CUDA 530. We've used it before in a bunch of other videos. And again, we do we are going to do different videos on this D-Brand kit in different configurations uh, to make things easier. But what we're going to do is, first things first, remove this cover here. Because there's another question we're going to answer in a further video coming soon, before anyone puts this in the comments. We're going to be repeating these tests, regardless of the outcome, with an M2 inside, but without the M2 cover plate. Because when this system's in operation, D-brand plates, official plates, or whatever you're going to go for, even like some $20, $30 uh, like cheapo ones online, this SSD inside this little slot here, I'm still not in love with that design. I don't like that there's an SSD inside this slot that is going to get hot. You're going to have a bay there that's not getting enough active airflow inside. So if we have a look at that Fire Cuda, this is the Fire Cuda with the EK uh, Gamer heatsink there. It's a high quality heatsink, it has to be said, and it's been tried and tested several times. But I don't like the idea when um, of when I get this SSD and install it inside this slot that I'm suddenly going to cover it with this piece of metal. These heat sinks are designed to enjoy active airflow from the PC or system they're inside. They're designed to draw the heat away from the SSD and introduce it into the air. So the idea of this being trapped in that little slot with almost no active airflow uh, to engage with it, to me, is problematic. So as I say, even though, obviously, primarily in today's video, we're looking at the um, ambient temperature of the PlayStation system as we uh, play some um, games. We're going to go for Far Cry 6 and Demon Souls and also do some heavy read and heavy write activity. The ultimate ambition there also should include what temperature is this SSD going to encounter? Because if the ambient, uh, so the active airflow and that passive cooling system in conjunction with the active cooling system in that um, negative pressure system is not working because of these fans, <coughs> we have to at least anticipate that the SSD may get hotter as well. So again, we apply the other plate there, put that on top. Actually, before we do that, we're reapplying the M2 cover plate there. And again, as I say, we'll have a further video coming soon where we're going to repeat these tests without the M2 cover plate and indeed we're going to do one using the Sabrent PS5 heatsink as well, <coughs> both of which are setups that aren't really as the manufacturer intended, but that is how it looks with the grey plates there. And I know I've got grubby fingerprints there, forgive me, but that is how it looks. So it's, it's pretty slick, I've got to say. Um, I personally quite like this design. Um, I, again, I'm not being paid to say that. They didn't send these things, but I... I quite like the sleekness of it. I was someone that when the PS5 first launched with these massive fan-out design, and presumably that is 
to kind of control airflow as well. But I quite like this. And again, I'm a man that's been using black covers on their PS5 for quite a long time. So I'm quite impressed with the design there. Um, but again, the objective for today's video is we make our way into the testing now, because I'm going to take this apart and apply our temperature node there. What I'm gonna, uh, the objective of this is, again, one, to find out does it work as well as the original plates? Two, the ambient temperature inside this system, and is these fan, are, are these fans going to negate that negative pressure? And three, that SSD temperature. If you're someone that's going to be using SSD upgrades, and let's face it, 2022 has got some banging games coming that are going to absolutely eat up your SSD. Is this going to negatively impact the SSD temperature overall? Let's make our way to the test. As I say, it's four tests. We're going to do some voiceover. It's going to be sped up over all of that performance and gaming that we're going to do. And I think we're moving around three to 350 gigabytes of data in every test. And at the end, we'll summarize the results and see what we think. Let's go. Okay, so our first test was a heavy write operation, moving around 300 gig of data onto the Seagate Fire CUDA, the M2 cover panel in place in both tests. And I'm recording this right now, around about a day or two after the test was performed. I'm in my conservatory at home, and the rain is banging against the roof, so I apologize if you're picking it up in the background. But um, interestingly, we can see that the ambient temperature of the system was pretty much the same, both which start around 20 degrees, however, it was the SSD temperature that was actually quite different. As you can see from the graphs on the bottom of the screen, I recorded the boot temperature of both systems, but even though the boot temperature of both of them was wildly different, I left them just in idle for a little period of time before I commenced the heavy write operation. And as you can see there, the temperature um, uh, conclusion there was actually quite larger, both of which starting around about eight degrees of difference at the beginning. Uh, the initial boot temperature, but by the end of the heavy write operation, things were a lot hotter on the original PS5 plates than they were on the D brand, which, again, I would have expected the ambient temperature to be a lot different with the ambient temperature between these two, at uh, 0 0.6 with the original uh, panels and 0 0.3 on the D brand, but it's the SSD controller temperature that was noticeably different there at the end of that heavy write operation. And overall, I've got to say, the original did not do what I thought it would do in this test. Now the next test was a period of gameplay using the game Far Cry 6. And if we first look at the ambient temperature there at the top, we can see they started at less than a degree of difference, at 21.6 and 20.4 uh, 20 respectively. Now, between the two of them, the temperature rose higher overall in the, uh, the PS5 plated version than the d brand ones. And the SSD, if we look at the controller there, uh, by the end of the test, things got a little bit closer together with Far Cry reaching 43 degrees on the original PS5 um, plate there and on the D brand plate reaching 39 degrees by the end of the Far Cry uh, playthrough session. But what's really intriguing here is have a look at the way the graphs decrease. Now, between all, each of these tests, what we did was leave the system idle and turn off, completely powered off for 15 minutes with the plates removed and reapplied them, as I mentioned in the video. What's intriguing here is the PlayStation 5 clearly had a lot of that cooling integrated into that passive airflow system that had been negated by the panels. Consequently, it didn't dissipate enough heat between the power on and power off settings there with the air having lots of directions to go in. So although the temperatures were still lower in ambient temperature and on the SSD controller um, of the D-brand uh, 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 dark plates, it has to be said that dissipation was actually worse utilizing these new panels. As I moved on to my third test using the PS5 launch title, Demon Souls, once again the same kind of story told itself there. Initially, when we booted the devices up, the ambient temperature started off at 22.8 and 21.0 to the PS5 plates and the d brand plates respectively, and at the end of this test session, the temperature rose, as you'll see for yourself, um, up to 26.6 and 24 degrees respectively. So the increase between them was 3.8 to 3.0 with the D brand plate having a lower ambient temperature inside the PS5 system. 
when we look at the SSD controller, we're able to see that by the end of this session, Demon Souls had the SSD running at 48 degrees um, in that closed system of the PS5 panels, and in the D brand panels with the extra um, air dissipation, it reached 44 degrees, as you can see there on screen. However, once again, as you can see the way the graph is depicting, dissipation was not the same between them and the dissipation as we've moved into the test got better on the d-brand plate but when we look at the original ps5 plates as we can see there the air there didn't get a great opportunity to ventilate and kind of the results we're seeing are now starting to reverse as we move through the testing there and dissipation has more time to flow through. It's going to be interesting to see how this compares in the next video when we remove that M2, but for now, let's press on. Now, with my fourth and final test, when I performed some heavy read activity, moving all of these games back onto the internal PS5 SSD, we can see the margins were considerably closer together, with both of them starting at 20.8 uh, 20 and 20.9 respectively, and ending at 24.3 and 24.8 respectively, PS5 plate and DRAM plate. Between them, the increase was very, very small in terms of ambient temperature. Now, in terms of the SSD controller, we can see that we actually broke above the 50C there on the PS5 panels at 51 degrees on the SSD controller and 47 degrees uh, getting very close on the D-brand ones there. And we can see that as we move forward, the dissipation of that heat is what's becoming very, very apparent. Again, most of this can go down to that M2 cover plate. When I've done my testing in the past, when I've used a node that's been placed on top of the um, controller of the SSD, as good as those readings might have been, they're never going to be as accurate as the readings from the controller itself as we're seeing here. And more and more, this is kind of really pressing on me, the need to not utilize that M2 cover plate. But overall, by the end of this testing, this did make me think that utilizing the D-brand pa uh, panels ultimately did result in lower overall temperatures, but not as much as you might have thought. Let's go back into the studio and summarize. So let's summarize the results of everything we went through today. I think overall, when it comes to comparing, utilizing the original plates on this system or using the Dark Plate 2.0, it's worth highlighting that in terms of the overall ambient temperature, this fan didn't seem to impact things really that much in terms of ambient temperature. Addressing the idea of this system when it's on for extended read, extended write, uh, Far Cry 6 and Demon Souls, we saw that with the ambient temperature node that we were recording here, that the temperature difference with the original plates or with the dark plates was less than a good degree of difference in every single one of our tests in the majority of cases it has to be said that overall the temperature was a little better with the dark plates but it was such a small number that i wouldn't really point at that and call that an overall success in terms of the overall temperature of the system although all of the indications of the temperature reading did seem to indicate for me at least that having the dark plates did not negatively impact the overall ambient temperature of your ps5 system now onto the subject of ssds I think things are a little bit more positive there. Utilizing the original plates uh, compared with the dark plates with the additional ventilation seemed, at least as far as sem uh, temperature sensors of which we were monitoring the controller there and looking at the maximum temperature visible there, that in every single test, the result of the SSD's controller temperature was better utilizing the dark plates there. So again, 45 versus 28, 43 versus four, um, 39, 48 versus 43, and 51 versus 47, having that ability to dissipate just a little bit more of the heat being generated in that M2 slot by the SSD did seem to improve things a little bit. Now, again, this is a microcosm test. This does not indicate days, weeks, months, or even years of utility, but, just based on the test that we've conducted today, I don't think we can say that the dark plates are going to be negatively impacting that negative pressure there, at least in the microcosm that we've tested. And in that score, I've got to say in terms of SSD implementation, I think it does a pretty good job. Is it worth $50 to $60? That I'm not so sure of. The differences were so small that overall, if you've got money to splash around, 
on your system and splash money on upgrading your PS5, I would maybe not look at 50 or $60 kit upgrades like this because you can get 20 or $30 case upgrades really easily as I've shown you in the past. I would look at buying better heat sinks, maybe looking at improved PS5 heat sinks as well. And of course, we're going to be comparing the same setup we've done today, but this time utilizing that Sabrent PS5 heat sink because maybe that additional ventilation and this heat sink together will give a greater airflow towards the SSD and bring things down even more. But overall, I still think it's a good case kit. Maybe it priced a little bit more than it needs to be right now, and I can't see any negativities on the impact of the system usage or the SSD. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, chuck me a like. It really helps me make each video better than the last, and overall, make better videos for you, right? Otherwise, click subscribe to learn and stay abreast of all of the other videos utilizing this kit, this system, and a whole room of SSDs and take advantage of the free advice section uh, below. If this video is popular, I'll write up a whole article and get all of the test results all there because there's loads that I didn't use for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.